come back and we're hosting Christmas at our house. Oh, yeah. oh wow. Two days. We will call the uh, <laughs> like to call the board uh, the excuse me the um, board of health. What day are we today? The seventeenth, the December seventeenth, two thousand eighteen meeting to order. We have um, open for public discussion. Seeing none of the public here, I think we can skip right on to uh, chair report. I'll be very quickly since I do not have a long report, not being chair, I don't even think for a full month as of right now. Um, the only thing I, I, I do want to report, I know at the last meeting I, I floated out there to see if anybody wanted to be a liaison for our CASA. Um, the more I thought about it afterwards, I thought, you know, gee, there really probably is a chair role to have where the chair should be the person going over and, and attending those meetings on a regular basis, coming back and reporting to the full board of health what, what, they're, um, what they have in their doc and their agenda. So if there's no um, objections by either, any of the members, I'm, I'm happy to take on that role as the liaison and, um, and report back. Yeah, no objection here. Okay. I certainly don't object. I was going to volunteer to be a liaison in a different capacity. Like, I wouldn't be able to come into all the meetings, but if it was like touch and base regularly, you know, I would agree to be that liaison. But Okay. I'd like to do attend the meetings. That was not something I could have been able to do. So yeah, I, I think it probably is important to have somebody go to the meetings. I know um, I, I did reach out to the uh, CASA director over there, and she um, was very happy to, that we're, we're going to pick this ball back up again um, uh, from a board of health standpoint and send somebody there on a regular basis. So okay. I figured it, it really should fall on the chair as much as I didn't want to take it. No, I, I should say I like that CASA. It's a it's a great it's a great opportunity. I'm going to uh, enjoy going over there. So. Um, Again, all right. That's the only thing I have on my report. So, other than that, what we have on tonight, we have can we talk about uh, board of health policies and procedures. Um, Laura, our health agent, has a report. Emmy, you have um, an update for us from the MAHB meeting that you um, I don't, did. You attend it, or was it? Uh, yeah, you yeah, attended, right? Okay, yeah. uh, back in November, and then we have some minutes to review. So, um, with that in case, um, since I initiated the policies and procedures aspect, uh, I think Gene has up on there, just again to recap, I don't want to get into the minutia of everything we do and every subject we do, and I'm, you'll, you'll see from looking at not only what we have on our website, but also um, Mass General uh, Law, uh, Chapter 111, has about 236 sections of it, um, with uh, a lot of subsections to that, um, that you can really read through and see the full scope of what uh, the state does in regards to public health. So a lot of what we're tasked with doing, obviously, is um, is mandated by the state. And then we also have things that we do on a town level that we're authorized to handle also. So what we have up here on the smart board, this is, is pretty simple. You go to the town, uh, website and go, click on the Board of Health and in the left hand column it's right under uh, what was it that's, that's the administrative services you go to departments administrative services town clerk well this actually we have a landing page for this so you can actually go right to the Board of Health if you yeah back up one page if you wouldn't mind sure um, yeah go right to Board of Health and you can see you can find oh, right yep you yep. find it right under on, on the left hand side in the blue regulations yeah yep. Board of Health regulations so um, you scroll down and you can see all the regulations we have starting under community services dash health. So these are all the kind of regulations that we handle in town. You can kind of peruse those at your own um, leisure. Again, I don't want to go through them point for point tonight because we'll be here forever. Um, but this is kind of, the, in, um, in a nutshell, the scope of, of what we do, um, what we're in charged with, what we're in control of from a licensing standpoint, um, and from an inspection standpoint, and, and, and more detail in regard to that. Um, so again, there's two good references, ours, and then the greater reference, which a lot of it actually doesn't apply directly to what the town would do. We don't have things like hospitals and stuff in this town, so the but check, Mass General Law Chapter 111 has a a really lengthy uh, amount of information that you can look through to see exactly um, if you had questions on anything that we do or how you handle it that everything that we kind of run our um, operation off is based off of so we, we look to that and we reference to that all the time to see what the state is uh, tasking us to do um, tonight I wanted to talk a little bit more um, just kind of 
in terms of structure more than anything else. I think for the most part, everyone kind of understands the public health is here for just that, the public health, right? So I think we all kind of figured that one out for ourselves. Um, but I always found, you know, having the structural knowledge of how things get handled as they come up is, always, is, a, is a good thing to have um, in general. So um, for the most part, what we are, we're a policy board. We, we direct policy, implement policy, and, and occasionally we have to, um, um, we have to uh, make sure that that policy is being adhered to, depending on what different things are going on in town. The, the implementation of that, um, to me, has always been the key component. There's a lot of things that we could, um, from a legal standpoint, we have the power to do. There's all, also the part that you have to look at and say, can we actually do it? So in other words, if we enacted the policy, can we actually do it? Do we have the, uh, the people on the ground to actually implement it? Do we have the budget to implement? You know, there are some things that, that are, are, when you kind of walk through them all, get to be a little, little clustered, um, so to speak, um, in regards to implementing or, or um, making sure the policies are being adhered to. So, you know, as, as a policy board, you're, it's always good to keep in mind, can we do it? More than, you know, should we do it, if we do it. Um, as regards to things like open meeting laws, I know you probably, I think you probably got this from Laura, correct? I know you're, you're newer members, sure. but I don't know if- But I know about it. Yeah, because it just it just went out to all. I it was right in the time, right around the time you came on on board and were sworn in. So um, every is it every two years? You know, every year we get these. I want to say it's every two at least. Um, I'm not sure of the time. Two or three. Frame. Yeah. So yeah, every few. Two, yeah, every few years, um, our town clerk sends out. Um, oh, we have to do. We have to actually go through some ethics training and open meeting law, things like that. It's uh, state mandate. So we just went through that, but it literally was around the time you were being sworn in. So I wasn't sure if she said that to you. This is just one of them. Uh, a lot of things, and we touched on this last week. A lot of things that we have to do here um, is done here <laughs> because of three-person board. We can't. Two of us cannot speak outside of a posted meeting like we have here tonight. Yellow. For the people that didn't get this or not sure if they got it, should we have them? Sign the last page again just so you yeah. have it on record. Uh, we should just have them uh, see Laura, see Laura. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, or email Laura and ask them. Just yeah. So if that you is. haven't given the last page of this, if you haven't already signed it and given it to Laura, if you could, Laura okay. Jim, right outside the clerk's office. Yeah, but I, I think there's also there's um, they'll have to go through the training. My guess would be, even though they're. I got yeah. an email from Laura. You did get one. Okay. And the email included this and the, a link to the online training. Okay. Yeah. All right. And you guys didn't get it. I got it. Oh, you got it. Yeah, it would have depended on the timing when yeah, it would have depended on the timing when it was sent out. They should have gotten theirs on the same time though. Mm. Yeah. I'll follow up with Laura. Laura, how does the last name spell? J I M or G G M M E. Okay. Um, so this is a good guide to, to look over. Essentially, at the end of the day, if there's something that's going to come up, that's going to be a board-related issue. Um, and you're outside of uh, an open meeting like we're, we're having here tonight, two members shouldn't be discussing it. And that's kind of the, the, the crux of it all. That's, I think, what I talked about last time that for our charter review, we definitely need to look into having a five-person board um, because it, it helps in that regard. You're, now you're, your quorum becomes three people, which means two people can talk to one another and bounce ideas off one another to say, is, is this something that we should bring to the full board? What do you think? Um, I, I found it helpful. I find it not as helpful to not be able to do that, quite frankly. Um, I, I find it just even just a quick note, email, whatever it is, just to bounce something off someone's really helpful to do before a meeting rather than try to get it all done in at a meeting um, when it's something that maybe it's just no Kevin that's a silly idea stop okay good <laughs> yeah yeah I just found it on the website um, requirements for employees and okay. boards committees and commissions mandatory training requirements for open meeting and conflict of interest um, end of September of each even year Ah. And any new employees or volunteers must complete within 30 days of appointment. Okay, so it would, it would fall under that. I guess you could not do so. it until just mid-December okay. <laughs> or November or whenever. Well, in fairness to us, it didn't get sent out yeah, until then. <laughs> <laughs> but if anybody wants to, you can go on the town website and kind of get okay. a bit more information here. All right. That's Excellent. on the town clerk's web page. Okay. Can I just um, can, say one thing? Whatever you'd like. Related to this. Um, 
So I know at the last meeting I had mentioned maybe having some sort of like a repository, online repository for just information. Yeah. Um, and there is some nervousness at the time. So I actually contacted the um, Division of Open Government and the Attorney General's Office just to see like, be getting close to any problems and they basically said as long as we don't have any comments attached to any of the things that we can put you know journal articles or news articles and collect that either email it to directly to each other or put it in a repository or whatever that we can all immediately access okay which i think would be useful so that laura doesn't have to spend time just forwarding stuff between would this be something um just from a um, possible standpoint, is that something that we, I don't think we have access to download onto something like a web, onto our web page. Is that you're referring to put it on the Board of Health web page? It doesn't have to be on the Board of Health web page. It can just be amongst the... Oh, I see what you're saying. Actors, right, right. Okay. Like a Google Drive. Like a Google Drive. Yeah. Sure. Like a folder <laughs> that just literally holds with things, not things written, drafted by us. Right. Like third party information. Right. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's no reason why three of us can't read a news article. Right. I mean, that, that's, <laughs> right. Right? that's a little silly. Um, yeah, like I said, so long as there's no comment, they right. said was their, exactly. their big thing. Did they give any guidance in regards to, um, does it matter if it's just if it's just amongst the three of us and not and not and doesn't have any staff involved or should staff have access to it? Did they give any kind of just uh, structurally? If we, I don't mind doing it, I just want to make sure we set it up right. Yeah. Okay. Um, it can't be all five. I I would imagine any. I mean, we can have all of us. Have right. it. I don't have like, any problem. Yeah. <laughs> Every just all five members should talk. All five members, members yeah. or even, you know. I mean, this would just be, yeah, this would just be publications that are public. Uh, I don't think, I don't, I don't see any problem. I just, as long as board members don't share any opinions on how the information, so I, I specifically said, like, for example, you know, pesticides, would we be able to share even articles about pesticides? And she said, as long as board members don't share any opinions on how the information in the article relates to the regulations. Mm -hmm. No, this is the assistant attorney general. Um, so what, what we generally do is we generally, uh, and I'd be happy to do this, defer to town council and then, you okay. know, make sure that we're in sync with what our, our standard operating procedures okay. are. Yeah, just, I, I, if it, I, just I don't mind doing it, I just want to set it up right. Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be a good idea. I that, can take to, care of that. Again, it doesn't have to be like a Google. It could just be us emailing amongst each other. But right. the benefit of a Google Drive yeah. is A, you've got like a citation history that you can use, refer back to if necessary. And also, you're, you can't really attach a comment. No, you just you drop into it. Of, you just pull it sort over, of which is. Yes. That. <laughs> yeah, I think that's probably a better idea because until you can just you can pop stuff in yeah. there and people can just jump in whenever they want to read it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we All could right. even distribute the packet off of Google Drive too. That's exactly. what we do with CPDC. Oh, yeah, that's true. oh, okay. Oh, you mean this thing? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, that'd, that'd be good to see what Ray, um, what the town council has to say in regards cool. to how we can set that up. Okay. Um, yeah. So again, like I said, it's we're a little. You know, everything that we do needs to happen right now until until we can change things. Um, everything needs to happen um, at a posted meeting. And then posted typically is a 48-hour period, so um, that's for the most part. You have to give notice of 48 hours that you're going to be holding a meeting so the public has a chance to see what it is you're going to be discussing if they want to need to come down to um, talk about it one way or the other. It gives them opportunity to do so. So all that's... And, and, and more is in this little packet here that you can peruse at your, at your leisure. Um, um, and I'm glad this actually good segue because I actually had on here how you know distributing um, information to members. So for right now, um, if there's something that needs to articles and, th and st stuff like that, we just detailed that that'll be great, uh, be easy to set that up and be nice. Something that's going to come before the board would be completely different. So that you'd want everyone wants to funnel it right through Laura. Laura then can get that information uh, out to the rest of the board members uh, for something that's going to be coming before us. Um, I don't think there's. Um, I don't think we we have to know the future. So even if, I'm guessing, even if there's an article 
and then all of a sudden something pops up for us three months later, I don't think that would would uh, be an issue with that. Um, having that Google Drive set up. No, no. and even so, I don't think she was saying, even if your talk, even if the article relates to anything that you're currently deliberating on, as long as you're not expressing an opinion, it doesn't matter. All right, great. All right. Cool. Um, let's see what else I have. Uh, So in regard, typically, we, we met, I mentioned that we're a policy board, so a lot of how that typically works if we're going to be implementing a new policy, uh, obviously we do um, our homework on it and, and, and kind of, as a board, come up with the policy itself. A big part of that is having a public hearing, so that's kind of one of the things we, we try to do is make sure we involve the public as much as we can with any kind of new policy that we're thinking about putting um, and implementing in. And probably the only other thing I wanted to touch on is in regards to representation so there there may be times where you are out at other meetings or even out in general so as a member of the board of health uh, you obviously have a certain role but you don't ever speak for the board and that includes myself even as the chair uh, unless the, we have the full support from all the other members saying yep go ahead and speak on our behalf and on this subject matter to you know xyz board uh, in regards to that it's not something that comes up a lot but it's it's good it's good practice to say this is just my opinion <laughs> but <laughs> um and I think that's all I have. Laura, do you have any, anything else, or Gene, anything else from the standpoint of structurally how, how we kind of uh, go about our business here, other than you know taking votes and, and, and quoting the minutes, obviously, things of that nature, which are pretty self-evident? Yeah, I think it sounds good. Okay. Anybody else? Any? No. Okay. All right, that's all I have. Like I said, I don't want to, didn't want to bog you down with a lot of the regulations, bylaws, and things you can review on your own, uh, just to get caught up to speed on that. Um, on that information. So with that, we have the health agent report, Laura. Um, okay. My first thing is the inspections for last month. So this is the month of November. We had 51 inspections that covered um, food inspections, reinspections, complaint, and animal inspections. The complaints were just um, yard complaints about trash, nothing about any actually restaurants or anything this month last month which was very nice okay um, there was two complaints about um, one about a truck and one about bags of trash wait a vacant truck you mean like a non-working truck yeah uh, yes okay uh, you ask yes and no it was a registered truck so it was it was called in as unregistered and abandoned and I sent it to the police department but it did have plates so they can have it on their so property. they can't have it on the property right okay yeah. We had no flu shots because flu season is coming to an end. We do have a few things on the Maven list, but I'm not allowed to talk about them because of HIPAA. But they're nothing that is of any concern. Everything's being followed. No outbreaks of any kind, so okay. that's a good thing. Um, 3B, so fast, so good. It's going along smoothly. You did have um, a question in the last meeting about the woman whose dog ate the dog poison. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I touched base with her again just to see what kind of testing was done and what the results were. She did take it to the Mass Vet Hospital in Woburn. Yeah. Everybody know what that is? Okay. And they did blood work, but because it was past the three days, they couldn't really do anything, but then she took it back to her doctor, too, as well, um, her vet, and they did blood work, and they couldn't do anything because of the time frame either, but um, everything's come back clear. They did no, they didn't pump his stomach. They didn't do any samples. Okay. And nothing else has come of that. So we, we don't know any more information than we knew last time, <laughs> basically. I know that they, did, they didn't get medicine or samples. I didn't know that the last time. Oh, okay. But the dog, but the dog, the is, dog still, is fine. Yeah. The dog is still well. It's so still hopefully well. two yeah. months later, it, we should be all set with yeah. that. Okay. <laughs> and Thank you. then the last thing on my list is the pesticides. So we're having a problem trying to find someone that can test the dirt. Okay. Emmy was able to find someone mm -hmm. at a price of $500. <laughs> um, what would they do for $500? It's they're doing uh, mass spectrometry, but they can't, um, that actually doesn't work for glyphosate, which is Roundup, that's a whole different testing 
Which is... And I don't know how much that costs. I don't even get to <laughs> But I can ask. <laughs> but I didn't even get there. <laughs> Which I would feel like would be the bigger that's thing we'd want to have tested for, since that's the store-bought brand, people. right? Yeah. So I, mean, think, I think you're going to get most companies on board with not doing it. I think, I think the question would be getting yeah, homeowners who typically do it themselves would be the ones that are getting the roundup. I'd be my guess. Yeah. Would be their go-to. Mm -hmm. Would be my guess. And so. Just for context, we're interested in this to test people's yards to make sure they're not using it in that right. space. We, have to, we should yeah. probably go back. That's, that's, that's a very good point. Actually, I should have I should have included that as the packet tonight. So the board for the last couple of years has been working on a new regulation that says any town uh, land that you can, uh, not to use uh, pesticides on it uh, of any kind. And so town land is sub but subject matter um, depending on where you are. We know where it's City Hall is, and we're not doing it at City Hall. I know if the schools aren't doing it. Um, but this was more in regards to tree lawns. So that little strip in between your sidewalk and the street. Um, typically in Reading though, not every, um, we're not a double sidewalk community where every street has, double, uh, has a sidewalk in each side. It, therefore there's a tree lawn on, on there. Now the, the town does own land anywhere from on let's say a graph just a grassy area over the over the curb from a couple of feet upwards of some areas maybe 12 uh, feet or more it's it kind of varies and it just all depends on the location of the land what how it's how it's made up for the most part you could probably say about four or five feet on, off your off your um, street is town owned property whether it's grass that you maintain or not um, that that's that's been set up as as an easement for the towns it's kind of a standard thing so this was more to target those two specific areas that little tree lawn um, in on uh, where there are sidewalks and obviously the near the street where there are um, and it was brought to attention I think from uh, originally it was it was um, a resident, I yeah. think, who brought it before She's the board, right? Two residents. Yes. Yeah, who brought it before the board. I think they see, they used, would see it all the time, walking their dogs. So the people were treating the tree lawns and pellets, you know, uh, kind of making their way out onto the sidewalk as well too, and they're walking the dogs up and down the street. Mm -hmm. um, so it was brought up and researched by this board and looked at uh, for uh, potential health risks. Uh, obviously, if it's in, ingested in high volumes of it, you know, it's a it's a potential um, health risk. So this board started to look into other towns that have this regulation. Marblehead, I believe, is the one that we based our main body of uh, work off of, policy off of, uh, to look at. We got to the point where we started to say, okay, we want to send this up to the selectmen. The selectmen um, being the, the entity that has the right over those parcels, that, those, that town-owned land, um, they're the ones who can say you can implement that policy or not. Um, they, it's actually they, it's their call to do so. We can um, we can suggest it to them, and then they can uh, decide that they don't want to implement that policy on that area. But before we sent it up to them, I think we gave them a little bit of a precursor to what we're thinking. We needed to figure out fines. I know it sounds silly, <laughs> but this has tripped us up a little bit um, in figuring out how much do you find somebody. And then the question came up: Well, how can you find somebody unless you can prove that they're, what they're using is actually a pesticide um, and not just some fertilizer, uh, for example? So um, that's kind of where we've been had, had a little bit of a sticking point. Um, we we were going at it pretty well, and then we had some issues come up in town where we had to um, handle some other uh, rodent-related issues uh, for a period of time. So kind of this got put on the on the back burner for a little bit. Um, so we're at the point right now where we have to decide what we want to do in regards to fines. Um, I know originally I had put in that I thought having a fine in the first offense is a, is a little bit of a harsh offense. It's also hard. Um, because we know it's hard to regulate it, that it might just be easiest to send our new policy to that person or entity, uh, whatever it might be, um, uh, explaining to them what our policy is, in fact. So the first, first offense, so to speak, is a, just so you know, Here's our, here's our new policy. You may want to read to the part where it says the second offense. <laughs> um, you know, with that, that kind of guidance. So what we need to figure out is what do we want to make for a second and third offense? That came up to say, well, what's it going to cost us to figure out 
um, if, if it's fine or not. Uh, in other words, how much is the testing? And that's kind of where we're at right now. We're trying to figure out what our testing costs would be because to me, it would be appropriate to make the fine, to cover the fine. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, we're a town that just came off a um, prop two and a half override and, and spending money to, you know, spending $400 to charge somebody $100 seems a little, right. a, a little silly in my book. But um, so that's kind of where we're at now. Do we have any idea what Marvel had done? Yeah, so they're, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes and no. Yeah. Yes and no. They actually don't know yet. They, their <laughs> fine structure was similar. <laughs> I would say, was it? Right, I, I think, don't recall it. I think their first offense was $500. And Whoa. Oh, okay. Like, no, cost to consider that they don't enforce it. But they don't enforce well, they don't, it. I don't think they've actually enforced it, it once. Said, I think that's what it originally said. Right. And then when they got in touch with Marblehead, when John got in touch with Marblehead, they had really no information because it's been on it's been on the books for like 17 years or something oh, like that. Yeah. And no one has any idea. They never get any complaints, so they don't even think about it. Um, I think there are, so I think what we have in, and I don't know if what's on the, is what's on the town website the most recent draft? It should be. Okay. Yes. So I think what, what we had said prior to the figuring out the testing situation was uh, what we had said after there. <laughs> what everybody else What the board said. said. Yep. <laughs> yeah. You can say it like what that. Is, <laughs> um, uh, a letter for the first offense. The second offense was like $50, and the third offense was $100, and every offense after that was $100. Well, I so think, so that $100. was, yeah, it's just so for full context, that goes back, originally it was 50 100 and then, yes. what, and, then and then the third, three, third and then one three, one. and then we just kind of, we just kind of moved the, the chain a little bit there, yeah. right? Uh, just pushed that down the road a little bit. But then, my thought again at the time was we should really know what that, what it's going to cost us to find, to find somebody. So I've sort of been looking at this. So initially, for a long time, this is really like sort of bothering me. This not being able to enforce because it's tricky to have to go out get a sort of core sample, send it somewhere. Like, what are you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> are we really going to do that? Is Marvel doing that? Oh well, well, no, never they don't. Have any sorry. Complaints. So, yeah, they don't get so any complaints. No. Um, so. But then, you know, I was thinking, you know, it could be akin to something like animal control, where, yeah, we've got the stuff on the books about, you know, you know dog pooping in the woods or whatever, but we're not, it's not like we're testing to see who's pooping in the woods and whose dog it is, right? right. right. I mean, um, but it's on the books, and yeah, there'll be some people who are going to take advantage of that, you know, and just still do it, but the vast majority of people are going to comply, mm -hmm. um, you know. So what's your thought? So my thought is that we... See it, see it, find it? See it, see it, find it, yeah. Uh, if you have, you know, and, and it could, if somebody calls in a complaint, you can talk to the person and they may they'll probably say, you know, maybe they'll say, yes, I did it. Maybe they'll say, no, I didn't. If lawn care company. So mm -hmm. just out of curiosity, if they say, yes, I put chemicals on their line, on their lawn, on my own lawn, I send them a ticket. You would send, if it's a first, first offense, you would send them a letter. And then I call them again and say, your neighbor called and said you were doing this, we were doing this, and if they say yes, I send them a ticket, but if they say no, I don't send them anything? Yeah. Maybe either way, we send them the policy so that in the beginning, we're educating people about what the policy is, and we're really relying on complaints as the way that we find out. We're not randomly sampling, you know, 20 yards right. <laughs> in the town. So maybe if we get a complaint, we follow up with, we want to share our policy, you know, not sure if you're aware. Maybe people will be more honest if there's not a consequence other than acquiring knowledge about our policies the first time. But then if we get a second complaint from that same person, then we, uh, right, I don't know how we adjudicate that. If we need evidence, like we have to take a picture of this person putting it on their lawn. Yeah. I mean, that, I mean, that's kind of... Good question. I mean, it's like, the same thing go. with like dogs off leash or dogs. Yeah. You know, owners not picking up after their dogs, right? I mean, again, I guess theoretically, you could take a picture. <laughs> <laughs> people right. don't 
do that. Right. People right. don't do that, and you know. I guess I would say our fines the only way to change behavior. Like you're saying, no. right? I mean, they're in. I'm trying to think of how would you incentivize that otherwise? Like, if you change to a different. Well, you could also give them. Way to prevent um, past the well, you could give them something that's that is allowable. Yeah, well. so I you can give them a list of allowable substances certain, they could yeah, substitute them with, that, right? Regardless if we're. Because that's this. yeah, because that, that that makes the most sense right there. Because yeah. you're not saying no, you can't do that. You're saying you just can't do it with that. Right. Mm -hmm. You can do it with this. Right. So you if know. we send them a letter and tell them they can't do it with that, and then their neighbor who doesn't like them calls and said they were doing it with that because they saw them, and then we call them and they say no, I wasn't doing it with that. that. Well, so therein lies the the problem. I, th I think I think the, um, the see it, find it. Yeah. Would actually be a so that we would need boots on the ground to patrol this. Well, no, right it, it'd be it'd be a way of saying it's it's as, it's as strong as the paper it's written on. Right. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately, right. but right. but it could still be enough to change some. Behavior, well, that's just it, right? right? So this is about change in behavior more than it is fines, I and mean, we're not trying to. But mm -hmm. if if we were going to go down the fine route, I just wanted to make sure that we're covering ourselves financially. Yeah, yeah. I just yeah, I think it doesn't make sense. It complicates Maybe it a whole lot more. Person. I thought about it. Right, just don't <laughs> right. think it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I agree with you. Right. I agree with you 100. percent If there's anything, I'm just brainstorming right here about like making it known that if you save your receipt for buying whatever approved products then that's your evidence that you're sort of doing and this is going to say it's somewhere for my inspectors that if the answer is no drop it and if the answer is yes send them a ticket so that we have it spelled out as far as we, we'll have to it. we'll have to revise the policy to add in language um and then, and then uh, we can all vote on it right uh, that it says this is not a um that we're not adding we're uh, proactively sending people out into the field yeah. to do this that this is a reactionary policy yeah right. to a complaint so if i could just back up the board of health held a public hearing october of 2017 mm -hmm. on this regulation and so that it was then um brought before the select board after that. How many changes have been made in that? Have there been any changes? I don't know. I'm just trying to track yeah. in my mind yeah. here how this know. is going. Because yeah. yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. <laughs> so um, the I just did a quick cursory review of the minutes uh, that I could find on the website. And if, if I'm accurately presenting this, um, Crystal was nice enough to make some copies. Um, it was discussed May 15th of 2018 at this board so um, uh, yeah, that. the chair report cost again um, talked about this regulation okay okay and um, there was discussion that there should be a warning for the first yeah. offense come up with a good plan on how to enforce the regulation and that'll be tricky to prove a uh, finable offense. Mm -hmm. right. And then they talked about um, Board of Selectmen and Board of Health meetings in June and presenting, um, there was, I think this board meet, met on June 12th and then the chair went before the select board on June 19th. And again, the, the wording on fines, effective date, brief discussion about implementation and other best practices. So then if you flip to the select board meet minutes from June 19th, mm -hmm. on page five, four, yep. five I guess it is, um, yep. Board of Health update, you can see that um, Chair Costigan made the presentation uh, about these tree lawn regulations and um, talked a little bit about his opinion on that and um, the goals of it the, for the Board of Health and then there were some comments from the select board um, and they discussed enforcement and punishment um, and commented that it might be hard to enforce how 
questioned how it could be proved. Yep. Yep. Let's see where you're going. And then um, there was a comment that they felt the select board felt maybe a public hearing from the select board wasn't a, an idea for a next step. Uh, before they go any further and then um, they talked about education just like we just talked about um, and then um, the board the final comment is the board noted they would like to continue this talk and set up a public hearing at a later date okay so that's what I found very quickly okay um, I don't remember anything beyond that June date. I think that we shifted. We, we shifted. It. We yes. completely shifted at yes. that point. Yes. Yeah. So um, when it came up recently, um, I, I didn't have all this information in front of me, and I wasn't sure where we ended up. Um, and I thought, I don't, know, I don't know exactly what the exact next step is, but I'll defer to the board. Okay. It's good to have a refresher, though. Yeah, yeah. That's great. Thank it's, you. <laughs> it's, I guess just for context, do we have an idea of the scope of the problem? I mean, obviously we want to limit pesticides in general, but is this a policy just for the sake of a single complaint or, or, or a comment? I mean, I think... And I, yeah, I think we don't no. know. You know, none of us really pesticides that's so terrifying really is that you have you never know what you're being exposed to right yeah, yeah. um yeah okay just curious if it helps there was two women that came yeah to the board back in may that, that i guess this had been going on a long time prior mm -hmm. to my arrival mm -hmm. but um there was two women that had reached out okay. yeah if that helps at all yeah, i think because we kind of have two issues here. One is how big of a problem is it really? And two is how extreme are the consequences? Right. Even if people don't care about it, which you know, holding a public hearing might be, help assess out how much mm -hmm. the public is concerned. But you know, the public might not be concerned about something that's <laughs> really bad for them. Right. So I guess I don't know. Um, and again, I'm just brainstorming and thinking out loud. It seems like our decision is weighing the consequences of doing nothing against the public need to have their voice heard and their needs addressed um, and, and I, the, know, um, I didn't know if you had looked at uh, kind of consequences or effect sizes or risks so there was that anticipate so I haven't looked at this and not saying that you need to no, 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 no. No, stop I haven't all. looked at this recently um, rats <laughs> but <laughs> totally understand. Um, uh, last spring, I, I found an article that I think it was a Harvard group who, I, sh I all have to look all of these up. Put them in a drive. Drive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. drive. Um, where they found a link, bet well, and now, this has now been confirmed, but um, a link between uh, glyphosate and lymphoma. And they found that particularly in children, and they found it even with, so this study was primarily looking at indoor pesticide use, but they had one arm of their study that was outside residential use. Um, and that was uh, where they found issues. Um, and then I found another study out of Italy where they were looking at communities in a part of Italy that has, I think, a lot of orchards, and they were doing spraying, and they were looking, they were doing a combination of, um, so it was a, you know, these longer term studies are very difficult, very expensive, but, um, so they did a sort of a shorter term molecular study um, and they were looking at levels of these chemicals in urine and then looking at um, uh, changes in, uh, in DNA and they were finding uh, an increase in mutagenesis mm -hmm. that increase may 
revert back to normal when the spring season was completed, mm -hmm. but um, their but their study was only a year long, mm -hmm. so yeah. they only went through like one rail cycle. Right, and I think farmland exposure because we're not near. Well, they farm. yeah, they, but these weren't these weren't uh, uh, people who lived on farmland. This was like a, a town and just in a region that happened to have mm -hmm. farms in the area. Mm -hmm. um, it is a different exposure though. Um, and then obviously there was that, the recent s story of the um, farmer who was at the glyphosate, that Roundup story where he was using it uh, and mm -hmm. sued the company. I have seen that. Uh, yeah. So that was, that uh, <coughs> came out maybe three months ago. There are more, I, I just, yeah, I haven't looked recently. Yeah, I haven't looked a lot into that, but I'm wondering if we would be interested in education campaigns, sort of just sharing information on the website, mailers, things like that, letting people know what's approved, what's not, and then at a certain point in time, say five months after we've sent out three flyers, just doing a random test like no individual would ever be named but just say okay do you know let's get an idea of the levels in residential areas um, and see if it's actually a problem I know I'm just yeah just throwing it out there because right if you're thinking what's the pushback from we don't want to have our yards randomly sampled we haven't done anything wrong <laughs> I see that I mean well you can't actually go you can't, can't actually go onto private property anyway without. Um, but we wouldn't do private property. Uh, just the the tree lawn, property on tree lawn. Because that's what we would be regulating anyway. Uh, I mean, I just. Too big. It's too big. <laughs> too much. I wonder yeah. if the cost of something yeah. like that would be. I mean, I think right. it's just. I think yeah. it's just too big. Yeah. To get really any meaningful information, you'd have you'd have to do a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you know, get like expensive. A hundred <laughs> samples or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, it, in my in my summary here, there is one. Where is it on the this back of the first page or on the second page at the top? They had one uh, person who's speaking about public health had. Um, one thing about is his strategies listed by impact level with the least impactful. It's under wellness and prevention work, sorry, uh, at the top of the page. Um, and so they were stating that education is actually the least effective. The least effective. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that's people don't, yeah. they, okay. they don't have to do clinical and intervention being medications, things like that. Um, then long lasting protective intervention, which is, you know, colonoscopy, smoking cessation, um, changing context, which is that's. Changing context is the regulation piece, um, and then socioeconomic factors. Um, so people tend to change more when they have to change. Right, right. Or when they feel when the environment when they changes and they don't have to do anything. Different yeah, than the or right. environment. Exactly. Exactly. Do we think that we need to have a public hearing because they talked about it back in May? Or I guess I don't understand. No, the public hearing preceded. So we have oh, it already. It been was four? 14 months ago right. that this oh. board, oh. a different it's, composition yeah. of the board, right. held a public hearing about this regulation. Right. So the question but here. The regulation was, has absolutely, the, the Board of Health has can't. no jurisdiction at all over. Right imposing a regulation like this. It's completely under the jurisdiction of the select board. Because so they are the roadway commissioners. Yep. It's so whether the select then they, board wants to have their own public hearing. Right. Because this is, they may is there's been hearing. case law. The Board of Health has no authority Not to happen. adopt a, a regulation like this. Right. Okay. So where that leaves us then, um, is having something that's in in final versions present to the select board. 
essentially. Or maybe you've already done that. I just sort of feel bad because two members here have not <laughs> had a chance to read them, right? So right. we should at least give them yes. the opportunity yep. to read them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Um, just my own opinion. I think you guys have already done all the legwork here. Yeah. Just and I think that. Just yeah. Yep. I think that the next step is if there's going to be a public hearing, it would yep. be the select board's hearing. Yeah. Okay. So we don't need to actually make any of these decisions before that. It's like fine. It's not it's under your authority. It's, te it's, it's technically already been voted on by a previous board to send yeah. it to the selectmen. Okay. Um, so <laughs> and it's been at the, so at the selectman level now, right? And it's been at the selectman level. The chair appeared in June. The board of health chair. They were waiting. The only thing they were waiting on from us is how we wanted to handle violations. Yeah, and so everything I think else was pretty much the same and intact. And the question came up about staffing levels. Right. Right. But if we're not going to, ha if we're not going to be. Enforcing, which, enforcing, in which enforcing it, I think, is going to get very, uh, very costly. And mm -hmm. the thing I thought the other day too is you could you could have a, a penalty that meets the um, the cost for the town, and it comes back I negative, know. and you lose I that know. money anyways. You lose that money, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, right. that that part to me that that's a tricky part. That's a tricky component. You certainly, I, I don't think anybody intended for this to be a new um, a new hire. Um, that is just strictly going out and, and monitoring this. Right, right, right. Uh, I don't think town meeting would have have a propensity to, to see that kind of yeah. money spent um, in, in that way. So um, you know, I would, yeah. would probably make it real simple on their behalf to just take that money out of the budget itself. But um, I think we just think of it like the animal control stuff. The yeah. Letter fifty a hundred. Yeah. Just how we have it written. Yeah. Okay, I have no problem with that. Um, but we will we will need to change some language though, so so it's understood in the policy. Um, one of the, one of the things you always want to make sure you do. We we know what we, our intentions were. Yeah. Three boards from now, I have no idea what uh, three of our intentions are. <laughs> so we it's you always got to spell out in there, like, which is yeah, just, just we can just add in some language that you know that this is a. Um, this is not a, uh, how do we want to word this? Not a complaint all so that nobody gets in trouble when we don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or not, right. Well, I know this who we're doing for, we're not going out there. Right, this is a best practices policy that is, that is not, that, we, that is, yeah, that is more reactionary than it is proactively searching to, to, to remove the products. Right. To sort of something along so, something yeah. along yeah, something yeah. along those lines so it's understood moving forward that this is this really uh, as bad as it is being the lowest on the totem pole and educational uh, aspects <laughs> <Yeah>. of, <laughs> of our town but it, it's still you know look at Jake it changed it in Marblehead right so they had a, yeah. basically 100% compliance for the most part because the, they say the people of Marblehead just changed yeah. just adapted I think if you give them to your point you know um, educate them by giving them hey you, you can't use you can't use A, yeah. but look, you can use B. Then they'll go. Yeah. Most of them, not everyone, but <laughs> right. you know. So I think that would be some you know in in relation to rolling this out. Um, I know we talked in the past about making sure that we have it finalized and then promote it before we actually implement it. In this case, yeah. I guess we could probably do it all in the same one if mm -hmm. if, we're, if we're looking at it more as a educational I'm component. Um, yeah, when does the next water billing go out? Any idea, anyone? I think I just the next I think water billing cycle. Water bills go out. Can't do it in the tax bills. <laughs> everyone whips up the tax bills. Most people are. <laughs> yeah, the water bills are usually the best. The water bills are the best to send these things out at, um, from an educational standpoint. I don't know when they go out. But it hasn't been yeah. like that. Well. well just theoretically speaking, theoretically, we, right. we're trying, if we, we still we still need to have the, the board of selectmen. We need, need to tell them what our intent is, and, and give it to them. So we probably should have um, for the next meeting an agenda item to go over to go over that language and approve the new language that we're adding into what we already approved. Um, since we're since we're technically we'll be adding something into it, we can then send it to the board in, in its finality, and they can have a hearing on it if they want. So they can you know. If they want to go with that route, they can kind of take take the ball and run with it. Uh, 
So you're saying the Board of Health will pass it to draft a modified um, regulation mm -hmm. with that one change and making it clear that this is a regulation you're recommending, but you're not recommending enforcement of it. So that staff will have a clear signal that even though we work in public health, we're not going to be enforcing this. Oh, I thought the regulation was that if a complaint is filed, then the first offense will be a letter, the second will be $50. It will, it will sort of be enforced, but only enforced based on snitching on uh, a citizen filing a complaint so it's not well, like food inspections or something. no no but the, the like how how you verify how you would issue even a, a fine would be either somebody owns up to doing it themselves or uh, I don't know a resident passes a lawn care company asks them what they're spraying they say what they're spraying <laughs> but no because we won't be out on the road so we not you it would be a it would be um you know it would just be interview based resident yeah if somebody complains to you all you can do is interview and if if nobody says yes i did it you can't do anything so what are you thinking? I think it's, you, you don't want my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> like why have it on the books if it's not, yeah. if you're not going out there right. to. So that, then a year from now when the numbers come up, I'm going, and how many lawns did you inspect? And I say, absolutely none. Well, how many people complained? Well, Joe wasn't getting along with Bob next door and he said that he was putting pesticides on his lawn, but Bob says he didn't, so it ended there. And then Joe comes to the meeting and says, nope, that's what Bob was doing. Then you get the lovely neighbor-neighbor fight. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe the best thing to do is um, recirculate the draft of these regulations. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe at the next Board of Health meeting, there could be a little more discussion about a revised draft mm -hmm. if one person wanted to take the lead on revising the draft okay. and then we can circulate them around for the next board of health meetings where we can kind of see the yeah. the regulation as drafted i think if we're going to do it we should do it not just you know hire somebody have them out there on the road test it there's going to be no. I, there's going to be no I funding just, for that. I just yeah. yeah I don't see that money. as a possibility. Or that's the problem. Would the alternative be, as you were discussing, to go with a list of best practices? Mm -hmm. That's an interest. So not even advocating that policy change be made. Maybe it doesn't saying, end up as a regulation. Maybe, maybe it ends up as a best practices. Yeah. Um, we've done that in planning with, with the CPDC, with, for example, South Main Street. You know, some planning departments have design guidelines and it's very rigid and you have to, everything has to fit in. And we decided that wasn't what we wanted. We wanted best practices. So we created a document for best practices for South Main Street. And it's the kind of thing about trees and um, sign it and we didn't even do signage we did trees and design best practices mm -hmm. nothing hard and fast it's zoning by law but it's I think it gets to the goal of elevating South Main Street so if the goal is to have increased awareness about the risks of pesticides maybe there's a way to do it as a best practices and maybe in collaboration with the Garden Club or some other community partners Besides the public information that you're talking about, you could begin to change behaviors. Mm -hmm. I think that's what you're talking about, yeah. right? Education and awareness using the socioeconomic model. All the different tiers. Yeah. Like. I do like that um, it addresses the concern of this initially started because two citizens were concerned and came to the yep. town to yep. say this is an issue and so then it went into a policy making route but I do think that addresses the spirit of the concern by recommending 
best practices. It can be on the website. We can collaborate with the Garden Club to spread awareness. Or maybe you present yeah. it to the Board of Selectmen both ways. If it goes the regulatory way, then you know it raises certain issues, right. which we're all right. discussing. Or if you want to choose an alternative path, um, you might end up with a similar result right. without getting hung up on all those issues. Right. Yeah. And there's always the possibility later, if education doesn't work, then we can look Absolutely. at enforcement. Yep. So I'm just worried about setting forth a policy that we don't enforce. enforce. Yeah, that's, it gets tricky. that's where I'm. Yeah. I think it just depends on your definition of enforcement. I mean, right. You I know, think it could I be enforced. It's yeah. I mean, I think it's still being enforced. It's just not being enforced by soil t testing that you know scientific way. Um, right. Like seatbelt laws are enforced. Sort of, and then if I guess if you get pulled over for something else, maybe they can add a seatbelt, you know, part of your ticket. But having it on the books does create other changes, like now cars have to put seatbelts in there so that people can follow that law, and people, you know, sort of shift yeah, the culture I mean, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, part of this is is really to get the lawn care companies to also be aware and That's change their game, point. right? Point. It's not just. The homeowner, it's all all the people using professional lawn care companies and to get them to to you know adhere and will they respond to the best practices sort of mm -hmm. situation. Right, that's a really good point. But maybe we could see and would part of our education about best practices include lawn care companies? Not just individual residents? Or are we saying it's individual residents' choice and we don't need to share that information with? No, I think you should share it with the uh, lawn care companies, yeah. Absolutely. I don't see why you wouldn't. Um, okay, so yeah. <laughs> we've gone. On a, on a full 180, I feel like. No, no, John. Um, so th this sounds like we should discuss this at the next meeting. You know, like, yeah. It's kind of what I'm hearing here. Yeah. I think maybe that gives both then, um, um, yourself, Ellen, and Laura a chance to look at the um, look over the regulation that we have. So we're going to finalize the letter that goes to the board of selectmen at the next meeting. Is that how I'm writing it? Mm. So we want on no, that. I think you're saying no. bring that regulation back here and have the, everybody discuss have, it a little bit more. Have a discussion in regards to implementation to pest, to propose pesticide regulation. Say that again. <coughs> a discussion. See, now I feel like I can even say it twice. <laughs> <laughs> a discussion to um, um, in regards to implementing the proposed pesticide regulation. And hopefully we would come out either with two proposals, language that tailors the previous policy and a suggestion about promoting best practices. And then we basically vote next meeting, which either to present votes as selectmen or to advocate for one or the other. And then right. we conclude next meeting, hopefully, <laughs> with one of those two plans. Yeah. Yep. That. Okay. Are we pretty light are we pretty light for January? Yeah, I don't know. Good. Okay. So yes. So yes. Good. Would it make sense, um, and I'd be happy to help if I can, um, to look at the calendar about another update to the Board of Selectmen? Um, say like in February, if the chair wanted to provide an update to the select board. Um, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. You put a place card in I there. I mean, it, that can change. Yeah, right. And I don't even know if there's anything yeah. available, but right. these agendas get booked They get booked quick, exactly. right, right. Yeah, see if you so can get a place card. If I could get something okay. in the queue, then maybe it's maybe it warrants the broader discussion with both boards. Maybe it's a joint board. I don't know. You know could be any number of ways of going at oh, it. Yeah, yeah. But so this board will have some more discussion in January about what we're talking about tonight, and then um, maybe the following month, if it's not pushing it, and if it's available, there could be a broader discussion with the select board. Okay. That sounds good. Thank you, Jean. All right.
Um, is that it on your uh, report? Yes. Want the South Asian report out? <laughs> All right, like where are we running time here? <laughs> we're, 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 yeah, we're right about, we're right about at the 7 o'clock <laughs> hour, so all right. <laughs> So I actually went through most of this, I think, well, some of this in the last meeting. Uh, uh, the orientation, the part one orientation is actually available on the MHB website, so you can just okay. click through those slides. I just pulled out some of the... Uh, larger points with primary responsibilities, which we'll go back to what uh, we had talked about initially, but uh, food protection, housing, infectious disease surveillance, environmental protection. Yeah. Um, and then I already covered the strategies. And then uh, legal authority, we've also already touched on. Um, the board ha is uh, given the authority to enact reasonable health regulations. Um, so that includes in the areas of uh, refuse, um, nuisances, house drainage and sewer connection, sanitary code, um, and noisome and offensive trades. Um, we have a lot of latitude, but as we've already discussed here, you have to sort of weigh risk benefit um, and and make sure that you're not putting undue burden on any individual. Okay. Uh, always hold hearings prior to enacting any new regulation. It's only mandatory for Title V, which is the sewer stuff. Um, but uh, it's good practice regardless. Um, and the hearings are not debates. So you're not supposed to do a whole lot of back and forth. <laughs> um, uh, inspections, periodic or complaint driven, um, enforcement methods being health orders, suspension um, and, uh, of permits, fines, and then judicial, but we try not to do that. Um, and then uh, staffing, the authority to employ staff, so staff and agents. Um, and then the next section was on um, vaping in particular. Um, and uh, we've already dealt with, uh, I think, some of these issues. And the Attorney General has dealt with a lot of the issues as well. Um, a lot of the holes in the um, in the coverage which is the non nicotine products um, they've added in uh, a lot of those jewel things don't actually have nicotine in them they're just flavored but the flavors themselves can um, be harmful which kids don't really know um, and then they had a session on marijuana which is mostly Mostly not applicable for us um, since we had uh, voted against, the spreading voted against. Yeah, we don't allow recreational we don't marijuana have recreational dispensaries. Shops. dispensaries, right. dispensaries right. Medical marijuana only. Yeah. Right. So most of that is not applicable. Not yeah. applicable. Um, although the only things on here, I think I have a uh, thing on marijuana accessories. That's a little bit tricky because you know accessories are probably legal to sell here. I don't think that was included in the. Hmm. I have to read the regulation. I, I don't know off. Of, yeah, I don't know the bylaw off the top of my head. Accessories overlap a lot with drug paraphernalia, so there's um, there's some stuff in there, okay. and then CBD being the only other thing. Um, CBD itself. It's fine, but just got to make sure that it's sourced yeah. from a license. So we have the raspberry beret. Raspberry beret. Yeah, I, yeah. Just, I just saw that. The, the old raspberry beret opened the up a shop. 
health uh -huh. store, natural food exchange sells mm -hmm. it as well. I don't know if anyone else does. Does anybody know the name of the, Sorry, where, the new shop? I think on? it's your CBD store. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry, wait. Thanks. Oh, it's the uh, cannabidiol, which oh. is... Um, some active ingredient. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It's non supposed to be non THC, um, which is the psychoactive portion. Okay. Um, Who regulates C B D? Right. This is yeah. it's um so the Massachusetts So we can require licenses for that? They're sitting here? Yeah, so I think the Massachusetts Department M-D-A-R, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural something. <laughs> Sorry, I do have this written down somewhere. <laughs> but um, I think they are requiring licenses, and the question is, I don't think municipalities as of yet, you know, everybody's sort of behind on this stuff. This is all, stuff. yeah, this all just popped it in. Just, yeah. <laughs> um, so I think you can request license. You Which know, I assume regulation. to make sure that they're getting from an authorized dealer. Exactly. Okay. So that's something that we could consider if we wanted to do that. Another thing is they're suggesting some places may want to age restrict it. I don't, I don't know if that's... Yeah, I've heard very little on it. I've, I've just I've, I've been brought aware of it in the last uh, month or so. Um, so it definitely warrants some more investigation. It's, yeah, there's there's a lot. There's a lot. I think that there's more not known than there is known right now. Yeah. On it. And I don't mean in the industry. I mean from a town standpoint. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's yeah. You can refer it. So All right. Well, thank you for putting that together. All right, that brings us to review of uh, November 26th minutes. Did everybody have a chance to review those? Yep. But one thing I, I think our attribution may have yeah, yeah, just swapped. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah. So where are you? Uh, definitely on the top of page three, I, I definitely swapped. And on page did I miss one on page two? Yes. Sexton and Romanowski voted for Sexton. I don't know if that's the uh, same. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. So, Name to switch. third paragraph, right above what the page. page. Uh, second page, right above the paragraph, right above the five deck road. Uh, Sexton and Romanowski voted for Sexton. Okay. And then again, I think at the top of page three. That Very was, first word. Mm -hmm. Yep. And the one right below it. And the one right below it. Okay. Anybody else have any other um, changes they noted? Okay. Um, the motion to accept the minutes as amended. All in favor? All right. Uh, motion uh, was approved 3 0 to accept the minutes as amended. Any other business? Motion to adjourn. 708. Oh, I said. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor. <laughs> 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 All in favor. 3 0. Thank you, everybody.